So once you have that fundamental building block, uh, and the, the focus of today is, you know, what are the reports that every executive director must know and understand? One of the things that's unique about the nonprofit sector is the terminology that we use is actually different than the for-profit sector. So a lot of times this can create confusion with board members. So a statement of financial position is what we call it in the nonprofit sector. It's basically a balance sheet. Um, statement of activities in the for-profit sector is called a profit and loss. Um, budget versus actuals. And a statement of functional, functional expenses, that's basically breaking it down by program, admin, fundraising, and really diving into the statement of activities, but doing it by uh, breaking it down by category. So these are all one, these four, an absolute minimum of what you want to look at on a monthly basis. So we'll go through each one of these. The statement of financial position. This is uh, a snapshot. So if I run a balance sheet or, or a statement of financial position, on June 15th, it's going to look different than if I run it on June 20th. Um, so it's a, it's a specific point in time. There's three main portions, asset, liabilities, and net assets. In the for-profit world, that's called equity. And the reason it's called a balance sheet is because it has to balance. What's on the left side of the sheet has to equal what's on the right side of the sheet. And that means the assets equals the liability plus the uh, net assets. So when you look at assets, um, these are things that you own, it, 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 you know, it's an intuitive term. So that's cash, that's cash in the bank, accounts receivable, somebody owes you money, that's an asset you have. Um, donations receivable, uh, you have other assets, fixed assets, perhaps you own a building. Um, these are the types of things that fall under assets. Liabilities. This is what you owe somebody else, right? So this is a, an obligation that your organization has. You just haven't actually paid it yet. So accounts payable, you owe somebody money. You just haven't actually written the check yet. Uh, accrued liabilities, the most uh, common accrued liability is payroll. So everybody works throughout the month of March, but they don't actually get paid until April 15th. So you have that accrued liability. They earned it in March but you don't actually cut the check until April. So that would fall under liabilities. Net assets, uh, again, in the for-profit world, is called equity. It's basically it's whatever's left when you take your assets and you subtract your liabilities. It's just what's left. In the nonprofit world, you want to break that down between what's unrestricted, temporarily restricted, and then permanently restricted. Permanently restricted means the uh, is an endowment, if you have an endowment. Temporarily restricted is somebody says, well, you have to use this at a specific time, or you have to use this for a specific purpose. So it's typically foundation grants, um, government grants that are temporarily restricted to, uh, to either time or purpose. And then unrestricted is that beautiful money that comes with no strings attached that um, every nonprofit is, is looking for. So grant tracking, I'm going to touch on this. We're actually doing a subsequent uh, grant tracking webinar because this is such a detailed field and a complex field. But there's basically two types of grants. It's either you get the money first, they give you the money, and then you have to report back how you spend it. Or the more complicated version is a reimbursable grant, which is popular in government grants, and that's where you have to spend the money and then get reimbursed. So the expenses come first. And there, there's different ways to track that to make sure you recoup everything that you spent. It really varies by accounting system. Again, you have to have all the attributes uh, that we talked about earlier. You've got to really be diligent to record those on every single transaction for this to work. And the ultimate goal is you should be able to pull those the reports that I talked about, statement of financial position, uh, statement of activities, per grant. So if you have five different grants, you should be able to run five different reports that show you exactly your position on those grants. And like I said, we'll have an, up, another webinar to really dive into this in more detail. Um, so you should be getting emails from us on that as well. Some of the, the key metrics for financial analysis 
is um, one of the most popular ones, and uh, Nonprofit Quarterly and the Nonprofit Finance Fund just came out with a report specifically on this one metric, which is cash on hand. So cash on hand is sort of a me one measure of the sustainability and viability of the organization. So uh, the, in the for-profit world, they call it the defensive interval. So it's, it, you know, how well positioned are you against something bad happening? Um, nonprofits generally just say, you know, cash on hand. So the idea is, if you stopped getting money today, how long could you last before you'd run out of money? So you basically take your cash, your receivables, marketable securities, that just means like uh, stocks or things that you could sell tomorrow. You divide that by your average monthly operating expenses. So say you, your payroll and, and normal expenses is 40000 a month. So you just figure out how much cash you have, divide by 40000 and that's that metric. That's a really common one, and it's one that uh, is pretty widespread in the in the nonprofit sector. Another one that's, that's really important um, is if you have debt, um, the lower your debt ratio, the better, right? So it's just your total liability divided by your total assets. Um, so you, you have to be careful. And there's certain metrics when when your debt gets higher than your assets, uh, you know you're teetering on on bankruptcy, so this is just a measure where you can you can make sure you're maintaining uh, appropriate appropriate risk. Another one is accounts payable. <coughs> excuse me, accounts payable aging indicator. You just take hey, what's your accounts payable times 12. You divide it by your total expenses. It's basically a measure of your health because it shows you how quickly you are paying your bills. This one's really interesting to watch over time in an organization. So if the AP aging indicator over a series of years is getting bigger, that's an indicator that the health of the organization is getting worse because they're paying their bills slower. Um, so this is a nice one if you're wanting to compare across 10 different organizations. Uh, it's a fairly easy metric to pull. And um, it's kind of for you know consultants or people who are wanting to, to analyze across multiple uh, multiple nonprofits. This last one is uh, one of the most important metrics. I would say the first one we talked about, months cash on hand, and then this one, percent funds unrestricted. And this is really about how flexible is your organization? Um, do you have cash for overhead and for necessary investments in your organization? Do you have cash available to be creative? and try new ideas. Um, and this is really a, a measure of the general, also the general health of your organization. The more funds that are tied up in restrictions, uh, the more difficult it is for you as an organization to manage. And so we frequently work with clients where they're trying to uh, improve the percent of their funds unrestricted. Hey Jeff, quick question. So for some of these, um, these metrics, um, like percent funds unrestricted, the debt ratio, and the cash on hand. But like, how, how is a nonprofit to know like what are what's a good benchmark or number to shoot for? I mean, does it depend upon like the, the revenue, the, the type of organization? Like, you know, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, I, I think it varies by organization. If you can, if you do know other benchmark organizations that are similar to you, it's always nice to look there. The month cash on hand. Generally, if that number is somewhere between three to six months cash on hand, that's considered healthy. Uh, I think the nonprofit, I, I don't exactly know the numbers, but I think the nonprofit finance fund said something like 45% of nonprofits operate with a month or less cash on hand. So if you're over a month, you're a healthy, healthier than the general nonprofit sector. Um, but three to six months is, I think, what people tend to look at. Within that measure, you have to look at the certainty of your revenue. Um, how are you a 20-year-old organization, and you always get this much money at the gala, or you always get this much money per month, or are you really young and um, you don't exactly know what's going to happen next month? So that that all plays into it. Um, for the percent funds unrestricted, that's the other one I'll, I'll, I'll speak to. Um, that one also very much depends on your organization. Uh, if 
the restricted funds cover 100% of the program costs, then maybe you're okay having a having a lower number here. Um, so it, it, it you can't take any of these things in isolation. You really got to kind of look at it, understand the context of the organization as well. And I just want to check with those on the on the call. I saw like one question come in around um, some issues with the audio. I just want to make sure everyone can hear us. Um, well, if that's just an isolated incident, so if you can't hear us, you can you know pop up with a question. That would be um, good to know, and we'll we'll figure out what's going on. Okay. Or if you can't hear us, well. So one of the things we want to do, I want to walk through this case study of an organization um, that, and, and we'll we'll look at how some of these metrics play out, right? So. We've created this organization called Natasa Justice. There's actually an underlying organization that this is based on, um, but we're, you know, changed the name to protect the innocent. Uh, human services nonprofit headquartered in the U.S., programs and operations in the U.S., as well as overseas. Um, the context, again, like I said, the context is important. This group has been in operation for five years. They really ramped up quickly in year, say, uh, uh, two to four. Um, they've expanded their program, they're really growing, and they're really looking to better understand, hey, here's what we've done in the last five years. As we make key growth decisions, day-to-day -day organizational decisions going forward, we really want to understand our numbers. So this organization says, hey, let's stop, let's look at these key metrics and see what we can learn. So the first one, we'll go through each statement and kind of talk through it. Let's look at the statement of financial position. You can see this is a smaller organization here. They have $70,000 in assets, $25,000 in cash, $15,000 in pledges receivable, $30,000 in stock. Um, so that's where you get kind of their statement of financial position. So let's go back to some of the key metrics we talked about. So the defensive interval, our month's cash on hand, they've got about four months cash on hand. It's not bad. Debt to asset ratio, it, that's under one, which is which is good. They have plenty of money to cover their their uh, obligations. So and you can see that intuitively. If you look over here, you say, okay, they have thirty-two thousand in liabilities, and they've got seventy thousand in assets. So they can easily pay that thirty-two thousand. Um, the AP aging, and then they have sixty-six percent of their funds are unrestricted. Um, that's really healthy. That's fairly high um, for for nonprofits, and I'd say that's a good number. So the assessment conclusion from looking at the financial position, they actually have a pretty healthy cash position, right? So there's nothing. Um, they don't have you know immediate cash flow concerns. Looks pretty healthy. 